Hi there, I'm so glad you're here and I'm glad that you've joined me this morning, afternoon, depending on the time zone that you're in for Together in Ministry. We're gonna be taking time today with members of my family to talk to you about what it's like for us to serve together. So I'll be joined by my dad, but I'll also be joined by my brother Anthony, Priscilla, Jonathan, and his wife Kanika to talk about and to give you a little behind the scenes of what it's like for us to work and serve together as we serve the Lord. So here's how this is gonna work. We're going to share a great presentation with you where we got together and shared some behind the scenes stuff about what it looks like for us to work together. And then I'm gonna be joined by my dad to do a live Q and A. So what I want you to do is sit back, relax, and make sure you submit your questions as you watch because we're going to take those questions and answer those questions a little bit later. We're gonna talk about what it's like for us to work together and how that works out when we have differences of opinion, how we share projects, what we like to do together, how we prioritize our time as a family, and everybody wants to know who's in charge. So I'm glad that you're here, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, and I hope that you get busy in the comments uh, enjoying this presentation with other people who are here too. But don't forget to ask your questions. I'll be joined with my dad live to ask, answer, um, to ask your questions, pose them to him, and then to have him, the ever wise one, answer. Maybe I'll have an answer or two too. All right, y'all, here we go. Well, I'm excited to be able to serve with my oldest son, third child, Anthony Jr., Your my namesake. namesake. Yes, I was going to say it He always you. wants to remind me he's, uh, uh, he's my namesake. I'm the only person in the world with your... I know, but you kind of use that to your advantage. I sure do. <laughs> so. We have had the privilege, I think, of being invited by our parents. Yes. Like the whole time we were growing up to participate with the ministry. A lot of those times, the staff behind the book table was the four kids. Jonathan was mostly stuff. under the table. Yeah. Several ways we serve together in ministry, uh, but one of the ways is young adults ministry. Uh, we're still kind of holding on to that young adults title. <laughs> kind of holding on. Well, I'm excited to be able to serve with my oldest son, third child, Anthony Jr. Your my namesake. namesake. Yes, I was going to say it He always wants to remind me. He's, uh, he's my namesake. I'm the only person in the world with your... I know, your but you kind of use that to your advantage. I sure do. <laughs> so, so God has gifted him in music and in, um, in events, creating events. So he's, he's been used in both of them in various parts of our ministry. Musically, he leads worship at least once a month at our church in Dallas. He does special music um, with uh, the Urban Alternative Events. He does mm -hmm. that. That's mm -hmm. another. And then, because if he he has a organization that puts together events, uh, he puts together some of our events here at the church for our conferences and some of the events that we do through the Urban Alternative. So those are the two ways that uh, we work together in ministry, as well as he's he's a great idea person. So he's always giving ideas for how we can do things differently. Sometimes too many Some, ideas. Yeah, sometimes yeah. too many ideas, sometimes unrequested ideas, but still plenty of <laughs> ideas, some of which, many of which, are utilized in one form or another. So we get great benefit out of his ideas, his organizational skills, combined with his music that not only we benefit from, but a lot of groups use it across the country. So, yeah, so my, my desire has been, like, Basically, the thought is, how do we do ministry together? I don't, I don't think I'd want to do ministry in the capacity that I do it in if it was not with family. Occupational ministry is great, but when family got involved with it, that's when it became my passion. Mm -hmm. My passion connects. And sometimes um, I, feel, I just feel myself go to a different level of, of passion when I'm standing next to you. I don't even have to be doing anything, really. I mean, I, I can be on the other side of the cameras, and I just get excited that I get to be a part of what you and mommy built at this at this level. So well, we're, we're glad to have you and glad to benefit from what God has given you. And I'm glad to benefit from your name. Oh, so wow. thanks, thanks for me. Thanks yeah. for uh, letting except, me be Tony. Except when you're buying stuff or upgrading on flights using my name. These are old using stories. Using my miles. I don't need his miles anymore. I have my own miles. Yeah. He. This is that was well, when I, I was 17. Yeah, I haven't forgotten. 
we have had the privilege, I think, of being <laughs> invited by our parents. Yes. Like the whole time we were growing up to participate with the ministry. I, That's right. I, even to answer the question, how do we serve together in ministry feels like this formal way of, because we just, we just, we, we just, just show were up. were together. Yeah, we just yeah. show up when we're asked to show up. But we have been asked to show up at a lot of things, like uh, the First Ladies Conference. Yeah. Our, our women's conference at our church, Desperate for Jesus. Um, we have both had opportunity to teach uh, at our church for the women's ministry. And then we just, we've shown up to sell tapes and book tables. Yeah. To <laughs> be hospitable to guests that yeah. we have. Um, but I really feel like it's more of a spirit of being there than it yeah. is like here are all the specific things that we've Absolutely. Done. I agree. And I think that, like you said, can't skip over the fact that I think our parents cultivated that. Yeah. That as mom and dad were in ministry, in local church ministry, but also as he would travel, mm -hmm. we were with him. So mm -hmm. a lot of those times, the staff behind the book table was the four kids. Jonathan was mostly stuff. under the table. Yes. Um, but we were all just sort of helping. So I think it cultivated this desire that we all had to serve with each other. We served together in ministry, and, and one of the ways that we, a couple, for several ways, yeah. several ways we served together in ministry, uh, but one of the ways is young adults ministry. Uh, we're still kind of holding on to that young adults title, <laughs> kind of holding on, and so we serve at our local church, at, at Tony Evans Church, OCBF, um, in the young adults ministry called Generate Nation, and uh, Generate just has to do with, you know, generating that energy for Christ. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of young adults are walking away. Uh, from the church, um, and they're not experiencing uh, what we experienced growing up, just the church environment, the accountability, um, the assembling together, the worshiping together, getting God's word. Mm -hmm. And so, and you've been very instrumental in helping with our Bible studies. I mean, yeah. it's a lot of things. Yeah. Another thing that we do in ministry is our vlogs. Yeah. So yeah. Um, we actually have several vlogs out that kind of show daily life in our household, um, it is quite chaotic. We have five young children. That's right. Um, but we feel like it's helpful for other people to kind of see what that looks like, to see that everything's not perfect, everything doesn't look like it does on social media. You know, there are That's days right. when the everything's post, going wild. Post-friendly stuff. That's right. Yeah, we, we That's show right. real stuff. But um, I feel even for some people that may not have grown up with a traditional family, um, they may need some examples of things to look at. And so we try to make sure that what we're doing is practical so that other people, if they want to incorporate that in their families, they can. Yeah, so that's been great. And then we're also working on a couple of book projects together. So even if it has my name on it, it's her <laughs> fingerprint. So anything you see in the future uh, is definitely a family project. So we keep working together for the Lord. What's the most rewarding project we've done together? I know what my answer is. What's your answer? The most rewarding project that we've done together, because we've done so many different things, is probably the project that we're working on now with the family. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, we Divine Disruption. We haven't told anybody yet. Yeah. yeah. We're working on a whole book called Divine Disruption, how, how we can find hope when life lets you down, you know, with the loss of your mom, my wife, with the loss of, of so many family members in a short amount of time. There's been a, a major disruption in the natural order of things mm -hmm. because the whole family's involved with that. Yes, but for you the very are, first time. You are orchestrating it. You put together the concept, the project, and uh I and named it, it even though you that. think you named it. Well, I did name it. I you stole the name, which no, is I, which is your <laughs> habit. You've been doing it so much that you forget how much you do it. No, I named it and you just thought it was your idea. No, that's <laughs> anyway, okay. I don't even think anybody knows about that. It's P.S. Y'all are the first, but we haven't talked about that on a public platform. People don't know what that, that's about to happen. So you heard it here first from from the uh, the patriarch of the family. I was going to say my, the, the most um, unique moment in ministry and the most rewarding moment in ministry was getting to produce and direct Kingdom Legacy Live okay. for me. I, I An event we did oh, a little bit over a year ago, and it was, uh, I'm sure th the book will be uh, that for me, but yes. right now, doing that in honor of my parents and their legacy and the place that mommy was in her health journey, which she was strong that weekend. That's mm -hmm. the bottom line. She was strong enough to do everything that weekend mm -hmm. and, and, uh, yeah, being able to do something like that. The, uh, that was special. It, that was really, yeah. really special. Because that was a time that the Bible 
Yeah, the the, 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 the the study Bible and the Bible commentary came out, so all that was mixed into that weekend. Yeah, to be that was history, and to be be trusted with that was was, great, was great huge. Event. Yeah, I think probably the most rewarding and gratifying event that we were able to participate in together as a family was Kingdom Legacy Live because we got to see our parents sort of sit and be honored for a change. You know, there are many times where they are the ones that are planning and hosting and preaching and teaching and serving, but to watch them to be, be able to just receive and hear words of honor to them for the many, many seeds that they had sown in so many people's lives and ministries for decades, that was incredibly humbling to be able to do that for our parents, yeah. but it also just felt incredibly, um, it just felt like a blessing yeah. that we got to be able to help do that for our parents. Absolutely. I think that in that event, it fe I remember feeling, um, the weight sounds negative, that's not what I mean, but the gravity, the yeah, yeah, the enormity of that event, that it was um, a gift, not just from us, but that we got to spearhead mm -hmm. everybody, giving this gift of thank you to our parents. And so beyond our individual thank you and our individual gratitude, that it was us gathering everybody else to do the yeah. same. And I agree, it was fun to watch them sit and receive. Yeah. It was really fun to watch And I think, I think it also helped to cover up, or to make up, I should say, for all the years we look back on and realize in our teenage years and early 20s. That I was sleeping church. We were sleeping church <laughs> and we were selfish and wanted to do, you know, what teenagers want to do and not right. do what teenagers don't want to do. That was us. And so you think about all those years where they struggled and strived and prayed and mm -hmm. were hoping that, that they turn out okay. That our kids were going to turn out okay. <laughs> yeah. To be able to then in our 30s and 40s stand there and say thank you. Yes. Oh, my goodness. That that was a huge blessing. Yeah, so I'm glad 100%. we got to do that. 100%. As a couple, I feel like our most rewarding project thus far has been establishing our young adult ministry at our church, Generate Nation. And the reason is because I feel like it's given a lot of pe people a place to a go. A place to go. That's right. And we've heard from numerous people, I'm so glad y'all started doing this because I kind of felt like I didn't have my place. And now I feel like I can interact with other young adults who are like-minded and have the same goals in Christ that I do. So Same walk of life. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's, it's, it was just important. We saw the importance of having a place uh, that just feels like them yeah. and feels like us. Yeah. We're, still, we're still there, still holding on. <laughs> Uh, but that would be uh, probably our most rewarding. Uh, one of the family projects that I think was, I, I just felt the most proud. Um, my brother really kind of produced it, put it together, but he made sure, obviously, the whole family was a part of it. My mom was there sitting in the front row so she can experience it. And that was the, the Kingdom Legacy Live event for the, the Tony Evans Study Bible and Full Bible Commentary. Mm -hmm. Obviously, um, he's the first African-American to write a full Bible, full study Bible and full Bible commentary. And just the celebration that happened around that was just incredible. So I want to tell Anthony, great job since <laughs> I'm, I have a camera right here. Um, but our whole family being a part of that moment and then my mom being there to be a part of a pinnacle moment of her and my father's mm -hmm. ministry career, if you will. And I think one of my favorite parts was all the children, all of the grandchildren came out with roses to give mm. to your mom. Yeah, that was, so, it was just, just a touching time. Yeah. 100% would be my number one moment. When we work together as a family, Crystal is always in charge. Not because we necessarily have voted and decided that Crystal should be in charge, but because Crystal has the most... Um, should I say, thoughts about a matter. So she's going to want to spearhead it. It's probably going to be even best for her to spearhead it because she's going to have researched the best way to start it, the best way to follow through on everything. She's going to have an outline. She's going to have it scheduled, and it's going to just be particular. So you normally end up sort of saying, I'm the funnel that will help us to keep ourselves in order here. Would you agree? Anthony's an engine. But you are a particular person, so you end up in a lot of ways leading. So it is what it is, except the position of leadership firstborn. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> well, no, I, 
I think that we do all have very special qualities. And mm -hmm. I think one of the gifts of sharing in ministry as adults has been to honor each other's leadership yeah. roles. Because I will plan something until the cows come home. It will be in a spreadsheet. Uh, emails, the documentations will be severe. However, She's very smart. I will very also smart. still be planning when we need to go. And you mentioned that Anthony's an engine. Yeah. I think that you are too. That's true. Um, kind of a go person. Yeah, she'll yeah. just be like, let's just get it done. Let's get it done. Now, I may say, now, are we in budget? She'll say, it'll all work out. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm mindful of budget. No, 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 you are. But, I mean, I will get stuck there in yeah. the planning part, so the yeah. planning is necessary. So I think I think, I think, think we actually work pretty good We as really a team. do because we kind of just go, okay, what's the part that actually fits with what you do well and right. feel comfortable doing mm -hmm. what's the part that works for you, and then we kind of just merge it all mm -hmm. together. Who's in charge in our, I mean, in our family, in our, in this dynamic, who's in charge? It, it, it doesn't matter what the dynamic is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you a dynamic that I am in charge of. Okay. Just, and it's, very, it's a very small dynamic. And actually, all of us as his children and grandchildren are in charge of the aesthetic side of things. In our yeah. family, I feel like that is our mom... That's what I, we all got something in, um, equally from you and from mommy. I got her eye for aesthetics and her eye for excellence and detail. It drives people crazy, but I'd notice everything, especially the way she would do stuff. So when it comes to the way you are, mommy would make sure that who you see on the other side of that camera was all put together by her. So I kind of carry that. So true, I don't true, think you would want to be in charge no, of that. I would not want to be in charge. <laughs> so let's put it this way. I'm in charge of the stuff I want to be in charge of. Yeah. The other yeah. stuff I defer and they can be in charge of that. Right. But we're only in charge of it because you see Yeah, you're so. only in charge of what's deferred. <laughs> so daddy says he's in charge. What do you think about that, Chrissy? He is in charge. He is in charge. He is very that much is so in charge. Very true. Um... It's true. It is, uh, it is what it is, it is. It is what it is. All right, let's see. So when it comes to the broader Evans family, who is in charge? You're looking at him. It's me. <laughs> now, you know, I don't have any of my siblings or my dad in here, <laughs> so I'm able to do that. Uh, but really, we collaborate. No, my, my dad's in charge. Dr. Tony Evans is in charge, runs the show, can open things up or shut things down by snapping his fingers, and we come running in with quick feet. Uh, how can we serve? How can we help? Uh, where are we going next? Uh, he's the visionary. He sets the pattern uh, for our family. He always has, and we've always respected it. And as it relates to me and my siblings, you know, we've always had our little one-up your wars. Um, and I, I normally win by virtue of being the baby. I'm, I'm the baby of the family. Babies <laughs> win. We find our way through. And so, uh, so that's kind of worked itself out that way. But we have fun. We have fun together. It's always been a fun thing to work together. And uh, Tony Evans has always been in charge. <laughs> How do we work through differences emotionally? You no, know, you added that. She didn't say emotional differences. No. Oh. I'm saying how we do it. Oh. Emotionally. Really? Because I don't if there's a difference, you're going to get emotional about it. Not every time. Most of the time. Yes, 95, 98% of the time. Hello. I just, I'm a very passionate person, and he's very stats and logic, which is great, but I feel like I bring a balance. I feel like I make my dad, I'm the one of the, the four kids that push him toward connecting emotionally to whatever the subject is. I will bring in how people feel, and he will look at me like that and just be like, what are we even talking about? <laughs> so I feel like listening. That's a balance. Have, yes, mommy taught me a long time ago. Um, our mom taught us that this is who your dad is. He's not going to all of a sudden be highly emotional like you, Anthony, so you have to understand who he is, empathize with who he is, and then express in a not worked up way what you're feeling. And daddy's actually a great, he's an amazing listener he will try to engage in all my emotion to get my point if I'm not, if I'm, you know, relaxed. So we just, you're very understanding. No, I try to be, I try to be, and you, you're emotional. So we, we work through it back and forth, back and forth, till we get where we need to go. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times he sees my point, um, and I'll find out later that he saw it and took, and took an idea or an emotion and went and implemented it, but I never knew he did it. That happens sometimes. Mm -hmm. It does. Okay, so when it comes to differences of opinion, 
those can always be touchy subjects. But I feel like now that we've been married 15, almost 15 almost years 15 now, years. Um, I feel like we have really grown in how we handle our differences in opinion. Um, I feel like we do a good job of hearing yep. each other out and knowing each person is trying to bring the best option to the table. Um, but ultimately, yeah. if if we do disagree, then and we can't come to a, a good compromise, then a decision has to be made. So I let Jonathan make the decision. Oh, yeah, <laughs> but 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 the the key is though God has really blessed us because we don't really. We don't really have many arguments or many overwhelming moments when yeah. it comes to ministry. We realize, wait a minute, we're on the same team and we're called by God to do what he wants us to do. And so really it's just trying to figure out what he wants us to do and how he wants us to go about it. So we find ourselves more in a collaborative mm -hmm. uh, space than we do in a space of trying to, to win on the idea. Mm -hmm. And so I would encourage all the married couples out there to just recognize you know, you're being used by God, and so you just want to do that, and we want to do it with a, with a, with a clean heart. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so we, we handle it pretty well. And um, I think you have to make room for flexibility. Like maybe yeah. you try something and it doesn't work, That's so right. you figure out another way to do it, or mm -hmm. maybe a different approach. In yeah, order and to... know that some things won't. You know, some things haven't worked. Yeah. And they, you know, you, that's, that's how part of the we learning. learn and grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. So it's just chilling. We're just chilling. You know what I mean? Just just relax and enjoy the marriage and enjoy being together, working for the Lord. One of the things that my dad told me, I'll never forget, is when my mom got sick and um, was starting to decline, he just looked at me and he just said, this happened so fast. Getting to this point in our marriage, every couple gets to the point you know, long, you know, you wish, you know, a long, a long way down the line um, where, where you say, okay, we're, we're coming to the end of just life. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he just looked at me and said, I just, this just happened so fast. We were just where we are now mm -hmm. with young children and now we're here. So it was just an encouragement to me to just appreciate her every single day, every opinion she has, every thought that she has. I appreciate it. Because I know it happens so fast. Mm -hmm. So we just enjoy it. I think that when you are working together with your family, because mm -hmm. um, that's what ministry ministry together is, we're working together as a family. Ministry is a work for us, too. Um, you hear about families working together all the time. Like, it's, it's not the easiest thing to work with people that you know and have known forever. You bring with you... Um, history, you know, and so if Priscilla disagrees with me and the way she disagrees with me or what she says hits a back nerve, you know, like a nine-year-old back nerve, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes my response to her is out of our relationship, the history of our relationship. And I think it does take intentionality to give you the benefit of the doubt. Like if I feel some kind of way to, to say, um, like we're in this together, mm -hmm. I think there is that intentionality. So when we disagree, hearing your opinion and, and not um, reacting in a way that brings history with me, it is work mm -hmm. to make room for opinions that are different than my own when we both are invested, like we're invested mm -hmm. in our parents, in our church, in ministry, and we both are very passionate. All four of us are very passionate about it. So when we disagree, I think it's work mm -hmm. to make room for each other's opinions mm -hmm. and to assume that we all care and really, really want the best. I have, I have to constantly remind myself of that. When we get together, do you think we do a good job of just doing family and not turning it into a ministry or business conversation? No. And who's usually the one that sits off to the side and reminds everybody to come back to family? Mommy. Outside of mom. Priscilla? Yes! <laughs> I'm always the one going, guy, hello, come on back, let's just hang out, let's just we enjoy. We cannot have dinner without <clears throat> coming up with some illustrations or talking about church business or the next program that's coming up or what we need from each other, um, partially because we enjoy what we do. We, we do. So it's not like, like forced work. It's <clears throat> kind of like, oh, great, we get to have a conversation. Yeah. But 
I do think there is a level of intentionality to just having a good time. I mean, and dad is a, I mean, he, he works hard. Hard. And when he gets fixated on something that he's trying to yeah. accomplish right then, then once he has us all together, he's like, well, let's talk yeah. about this. He, yeah. He's like, this is a great opportunity for me to get input and direction and ideas. And so it's not like we do it and it's a hard thing, but I think no. we do have to be intentional about having family identity that's separate from discussions about the church and ministry. Yeah, we do have to be very intentional. Yeah. And it's hard, it's hard to do that. It's hard. Mm -hmm. It's hard. Yeah. I know our, our husbands, I'll, I'll speak for mine anyway. My husband will just kind of walk by and go like, here they go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'll pull out my laptop sometimes and I'll be online shopping while they're still in a heated discussion about it. I'm like, I'm out. I'm out. But we try to do the best we can. We have fun while we're doing it. We so. do. We do. How, how do we keep family time from turning into work time? Jerry Shire, <laughs> he, he's our barometer for that because oh, I, that's, that's how I feel. When our brother-in-law, Jerry Shire, is around, he loves family time to just be that. And we didn't realize we had a, a habit of just starting to talk about the church, or especially like Daddy and Crystal and Jonathan will start talking about the church. I'll start talking about touring or an event. Um, Priscilla's kind of in the middle, but Jerry will just look at us. And Daddy, recently, you're like, okay, okay, everybody stop. Jerry, this is not, not going to work out for Jerry, talking about ministry the whole day. So right. we have to work at not letting it drift in that direction because it naturally will drift in that direction. Now, when everybody's together, the kids, the grandkids, mm -hmm. the great kids, it's a lot easier. When it's just the adults, it's a lot harder because everybody's involved in ministry. Right. And that consumes so much of our lives that you have to work at it. Now, the other side of it is our family gets together all the time. Constantly. So uh, we get together for portions, get together for breakfast every week. All of us get together for dinner once a month. Then we got a million birthdays. Mm -hmm. and people <laughs> gather for birthdays and special events, and uh, so we're together all the time. So, so uh, uh, it, it just depends on the context that will define whether it just zooms to ministry or whether it's it becomes more uh, fluid with regard to to non-ministry discussion. Right. And the the line is very blurred for this reason. It's because we have watched. Well, for the four of us, we have watched ministry be you and mommy's life so when we're with you it doesn't feel like we're talking about work we feel like we're protecting our parents we're protecting their legacy we are it's like it, it's not about work it's about what's important to them if anything was important to you we would be about that and be excited about it it just happens to be ministry which happens to be occupation and so it's mm -hmm. a it's a blurry line it is very blurry yeah <laughs> Keeping family time from turning into work time actually is a difficult space because our family does ministry. Like, mm -hmm. we do ministry. There's, and now in this new season of uh, pandemics where cameras are everywhere, yeah. and so you can just pop in front of a camera, it makes it even harder to keep that river, that water, inside of the boundaries, mm -hmm. you know, because then it can flow out pretty easily. And so you really have to, you know, you really have to set really good boundaries. Right. I mean, you really have to say... You know, we're spending time as a family. This is what we're going to do. I have to say no more often because cameras give you more speed at which you can do more ministry. Mm -hmm. Okay. So ministry didn't slow down with the pandemic. It just sped up in a different way. And so it's really thinking about those boundaries. I think it's Proverbs 11 that says a, an, an unjust boundary is an abomination to the Lord. Having bad boundaries is an abomination to the Lord. And so we wanted to just create that space in our house. And that's something that's a work in progress. Yeah. We're not that good at it. We just, we're just trying to recognize, which I'm recognizing, um, I've been away from my kids too much this week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I've been out a little bit too much. Everybody else gets a no um, so that they don't keep getting it. Yeah. When I think about how I discovered my unique gifts in this ministry, I, I think... I think mom and dad always required us in a very gentle and encouraging way to be involved with church. Yep. So we ha we were able to develop our own identities in our church apart from their directive. Mm -hmm. So I was involved in youth group. I was involved in ministry, music, the music ministry. Um, I was involved in women's ministry. So those are things that, that I was encouraged to do. Um, like, I don't remember daddy or mommy ever telling me what I needed to do. It was just kind of like, 
where are you going to serve? Yeah. Where are you, where are you going to serve? Uh, um, so I think that what I've done as an adult is a continuation of what I've been doing since I was a teenager. I've always been singing in the choir. I've always, you know, and so um, that's what I think in terms yeah, of that. I would completely question. agree. I think that, that we were a part of church in a very active way growing up, and that was a part of our life. We were required to be just like any member at Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship Church. We've got to serve and edify the local body. But then mom and dad were also so good at calling out of us things that we didn't even know at the time may have very been there. Very good at that. They were very good about very seeing good things that. that actually could have been problematic or were at the time. Yeah. Like for me, I was always getting in trouble for talking in class. And so I would have to be disciplined for, you know, not being respectful to the teacher or for getting the demerits because I wouldn't, you know, not talk demerits. out of turn or whatever. Demerits. Yes. But I also remember those conversations being peppered with comments by dad about the possibility that God had maybe gifted me with communication capacity. And if I would just yield it to the Holy Spirit, the Lord could do something with it in the future. Like, so I'd be disciplined, but there was always this thought that even the stuff that might be getting you into trouble right now, look at what this could be mm -hmm. and how God could use this for mm -hmm. his glory. Mm -hmm. So I think they always encouraged us and helped to mine treasure that they saw in us that mm -hmm. maybe we didn't recognize at mm -hmm. the time. Absolutely. They called out for sure what they saw in us. And it wasn't like in passing. It was very intentional because mm -hmm. I can, as an adult, I see how their comments about my life kind of were like a tether. Mm -hmm. So when I was struggling to figure out my way, I knew that there was something they saw in me that I should try, at least try. Yep. The way I discovered my unique place in all this ministry and in life is because our dad discovers our abilities and he fosters them. Hello. He knew. <laughs> if I didn't say it, he was going to answer it that way. <laughs> the bottom line is my dad and mom discovered that I had an ability to sing. That I, I mean, I thought everybody sang. You know, growing up here at church, we had to be in a ministry. I chose the youth choir, didn't think anything about it. The youth choir director used to point me out and say, Anthony, yeah, that's right. Sing that again. Everybody listen to this and do that. And I was sixth, seventh grade. I didn't think it was a thing. You know, it's embarrassing kind of. And then my parents heard it later, actually. I was just singing around just playing around and they heard it and then my dad immediately started to foster it at 18 he called to school 17 he called to school um, Liberty University got me a scholarship I was not interested I didn't even I was trying to go to Texas A&M and he said you got a full ride to Liberty so the Lord says you're going to Liberty <laughs> and then that started this whole I know when the Lord is talking <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's how it started with you and mommy discovering it and then mm -hmm. fostering it I remember one time I heard I heard Kirk Franklin, Kirk Franklin came to the house, and I wanted him to hear you sing. And he played on the piano, and you sang, and then he excused you out of the room. Oh, and yeah, and he said he has he has a special voice. So him saying that when he deals with all these singers was like a confirmation. I never knew that. Oh, uh, see, that's that's like the rest of your life. Keep listening to me, and you'll learn new things. Yeah. I discovered my uh, my gifts kind of in a weird way um, because I wanted to make sure in my life, listen to me when I tell you, I wanted to make sure in my life I stayed as far away from <laughs> preaching the Bible as humanly possible. If Tony Evans is your dad, preaching is not what you want to do. You, that's not an act you want to follow. And so I was always like, Lord, I'm not doing that. And you know what happens when you tell God you're not doing something. Yep. Because I was nothing like my father. My father is, a, um, is an academic. He, is, he, you know, he reads a book a week you know, by practice. He, he's a PhD guy. So I saw all of that and was like, I barely even like school. You know, that's not what I'm going to do. You know? <laughs> so I was pressing against it for a long time. But God kept giving little smidgets of opportunities. Um, FCA in college, one of my teammates said, hey, can you lead chapel um, during um, training camp? And I was afraid to do it, but I said yes. And some of the people were saying, man, that's the, one of the best words I've ever heard. Like, I've never understood the Bible that way. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I started thinking, dun, 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 uh-oh, <laughs> here we go. You know what I mean? Like, yep. God is God is saying, you know, here's your gifts. This is the way I want to use you, even though you have fear. And so, um, so it, it came about that way. God just taught it to me, and He showed it to me, and I just said that if this is what you want to do, just use me. I don't want to be a player that's on the bench. And so.
despite all of that, that's what I continue to do. How about you? What, what gifts in ministry <laughs> have you been displaying? I know some. Well, I think for me, um, I'm not a person that really likes to be out in front of people, um, but I have found that I'm able to support him in what he does. So We do it together. Yeah, I try to help keep him organized and <laughs> I need it. on track. <laughs> I need it. And, um, you know, it's just good to be able to bounce ideas off of each other and, and things like that. So, um, you know, and right now my primary ministry is in the home with the kids. So um, I'm investing a lot of time doing that. But already I can see that it's been fruitful. And I know that we're Huge. planting seeds every day in our kids. Um, and, you know, it may take a few years to be able to see the fruit fully blossom, but we can tell that we're at least taking steps in the right direction. So. Yeah, for sure. I honestly feel really blessed to be able to yeah. work with my family in ministry and yeah. to enjoy the work, but to enjoy them and to see, especially as we get older, how much of a blessing it is to be connected in so many different ways with people that I love. Yeah, I, I feel the exact same way. I just think that life is fragile and it's short. And so having the opportunity to spend the time that God gives us working together, playing together, enjoying each other, and knowing that there's the ripple effect that happens to be coming from that, that's a blessing to other people. It's just like, thank you, Lord. Thank you for the gift of each other and the opportunity to minister to others together. Well, I'm excited just to have the opportunity to do life with this beautiful young woman right here. Um, I can't tell you. I'm, I'm a words of affirmation guy, so I words of affirmation her to death. <laughs> and uh, just I'm just so excited. And the experience that I had with my dad and my mom and my mom passing away gave me a heightened reality mm -hmm. of the, the goodness that I have. I have a, he who finds a good wife finds a good, good thing, a great thing, and uh, is blessed by the Lord. And so um, I encourage you to be excited about your spouse. I mean, it, they may not meet all your expectations, but the, they met all God's expectations for you because mm -hmm. he gave them to you. And so um, be excited about what God has given you and take advantage of that time because like my dad said, it goes by really fast. And so I'm just excited about her. I'm excited about the opportunities that God has given us together both in this family mm -hmm. and our extended family. Um, and we just take that excitement to continue to press forward and do whatever God calls us to do while having the balance that we need to yeah. take care of our family. And I think it strengthens you as a couple when you set these goals in ministry and then you reach them. It's like it's like being on a team. That's right. And you feel like you're accomplishing things together and it brings you closer together as well. So That's awesome. Mm-hmm. What's been happening in ministry right now, I'm very um, ex excited about because it's, although I wish uh, mommy was still here, yes, we still call her mommy. Uh, uh, we've called her that. We did never stopped. Uh, I, although I wish she was still here, my motivation in doing ministry, especially with us together, because one of her wishes was that we, the five of us would be together. Um, so I, my motivation has heightened as it relates to the ministry that we're getting to do together. So that's, um, that's what's become important to me. I'm excited about this season, certainly miss um, Lois and her not being a part of this part of the season, but knowing that her mark is still here in this mm -hmm. phase of the season and that her kids and me and me and the kids are still plowing forward together. They're involved in the church as they're involved in the urban alternative while being involved in their own ministry. So everybody is engaged with one another and, uh, and that's an exciting thing to see and be a part of. Welcome back, and I hope that you enjoyed our family conversations, sharing some behind the scenes of how we work together in ministry and some of the nuances of what that looks like in our family. I'm joined by my dad, Dr. Tony Evans slash pastor slash daddy, and we wanted to certainly pose some questions to him, oh wise one, for all the things wow. that people want to know. So uh, first of all, I just wanna know how does it feel for you to have your family, because um, it's pretty much all of us now, even grandchildren too, serving in ministry with you. Well, it's exciting. I mean, it's a, you know, especially because it happened naturally. Nobody was pressed or forced or 
challenge to do that, but at the same time you were around it. Yeah. And because people, uh, every person wanted to do, use their own strength to support what we were doing mm -hmm. and to serve the Lord at the same time makes it very fulfilling because now I, I'm, you know, I don't feel like people are, are doing something they've been, you know, pressed to do, yeah. but, but what they choose to do and want to do and are gifted to do. So, uh, so that's very satisfying. I know we talked about it a little bit um, on the video from our perspective, but what did it look like from your perspective to keep us in and around it? What was that intentional? Was it just we're going to church, so y'all are going to church, or what was in your mind as you kept us involved without forcing us to do that vocationally? Well, to make us a part of the life of the church, mm -hmm. whatever that meant. So whatever we were asking our church members to do, mm -hmm. we were asking our family members to do, yeah. which might, which meant you know go to worship, uh, uh, grow, and also serve. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a little box on the table mm -hmm. for giving, mm -hmm. so we were, we were you know we said our church uh, grow, serve, and give. Yeah. So we wanted our children to grow, serve, and give. So since you were integrated into that environment, it became part of the environment and not a separate thing from the environment. Did you ever feel like this is not going to turn out well? All the things that you did, keeping us around church, in between growing us up and us growing with you now, the in-between, what I, I know the answer to the question because I was part of the problem. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, I didn't know if you wanted me to go there, but okay. <laughs> but what did that feel like for you? Because I know a lot of parents um, with of young children or even adult children struggle with that feeling of, We've tried to do things and it's not, you know, so how, how did that feel for you and what encouragement would you give to parents who are there right now? Well, you know, uh, your mom wrote a book, Seasons, mm -hmm. you know, in a woman's life. And I think there's seasons in the children's lives. Yeah. Seasons of ups and downs, of clarity, of identity, of sin, righteousness. I mean, there are seasons and you've got to love them through the season without condoning errant mm -hmm. activity. Mm -hmm. So that, that is always knowing they're accepted. You know, the Bible says that we are accepted in the beloved. One of the great things about the Christian faith is that we don't have to earn acceptance, mm -hmm. okay? And your children should not have to earn your acceptance, but that does not mean accepting their actions. Mm -hmm. It means accepting their person, mm -hmm. even if you have to correct their actions. So there were seasons in different levels of different kids uh, where they were, not all in or not flowing the way we would prefer them to flow. Uh, but there was never a question of acceptance. And so I think knowing that made it easy to, to kind of come home uh, yeah. and to settle back in and to settle down from some of the teenage or college years. Okay, moving on. <laughs> How do you keep uh, your family and, and, and think about this in any season when we were younger or now that we're older, from um, experiencing burnout with ministry. I'm sure you know that um, many pastors or wives and their kids experience burnout as a part of the requirement of ministry over the long term. So uh, have you done anything or do you have any counsel for um, men or women who are watching who are thinking about that, wanting to serve together but not wanting to overdo it? Well, that is a common problem of burnout because ministry never ends right. and it is very demanding because you're there to serve the people mm -hmm. and the people want to be served, especially <laughs> if they're giving their tithes, okay? So, <laughs> so you have this tension of, um, of being able to be a good servant without losing your own fire, okay? Mm -hmm. Because you're being burnt out. Mm -hmm. So one of the things is to create in your mind or even on paper, a calendar where you have an appointment with your family. Mm -hmm. Whether that's the dinner table, now I know emergencies, but apart from emergencies, whether that's a date night a few times a month with your spouse, family time once a month with the whole family. You know, our family gets together once uh, a, a month for the whole family dinner and we got together every Sunday for breakfast. So whatever natural times can be blocked out times, and people don't have to have to know about all of that. All they have to know is that you you are scheduled. You have an appointment. Like if you had a counseling appointment, yeah. that may it was yeah. blocked out. What we often fail to do in ministry is 
block out for our family what we do for other people in the church. Mm. And I think if we would take that same calendar mentality, mm -hmm. uh, then the family won't feel discarded and we won't feel that that we are we're having to choose between the two mm -hmm. and therefore get burnt out because you're trying to cover all bases. Yeah. That's that's good. That's good. Um, how did you handle, do you, did you handle the PK label? Whatever um, expectations people in the church would put on your kids or even, even now, um, how do you handle that uh, and how do you protect your family from the labels or expectations that other people would want to give? Well, I think from the pulpit, there are certain things you can say that say, you know, I'm asking my family to do everything the church is doing, but I'm not asking them to do more because I want them to love the church and love the ministry and love the Lord and not resent it. Most people can appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So using the, the sphere of influence mm -hmm. uh, to, to communicate that. Uh, and then if it's a legitimate issue, then you handle it legitimately like you would handle any person who was shouldn't be behaving that way. Now, in, in real world, in real life, there is a higher expectation of the pastor and the pastor's family. And I would handle that in private, not in public. I would not want them to publicly feel that expectation, mm -hmm. but privately share that expectation. Mm -hmm. Well, I remember you used to tell us all the time that your expectation for us was that we were Evans and that the standards, for us not to confuse the standards that you had for us as standards because we were pastor's kids but because these were the standards you would have for us anyway. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you start with that and then attach it to the faith, mm -hmm. or even if you flip it, you start with the faith, but taking the family name and plugging it into the faith, mm -hmm. then they see it as one thing and not two different things. Yeah, two different things, so good. Okay, when is it appropriate to take a sabbatical? Someone wants to know, how do I convince my husband that our family needs one? Yeah, I'm probably not the best person for that because uh, I've never taken a sabbatical. In 45 years of pastoring, I've never taken a sabbatical. What I have done is taken the month of August off. So yes. that would be the closest thing to a sabbatical. Uh, uh, and we would take off little little times during the year, but that would be the big time mm -hmm. for family time, for um, uh, me and your mom's time, for reset time. So that was an annual thing. Yes. That we we had heard to pretty uh, pretty fervently. Take off in the middle of the night. Stop to get donuts. All that. <laughs> yeah. And then you would drive all night long. I drive all night. I used to love to drive all night long. Yeah. I like to drive, so mm -hmm. used to love to drive all night long. So that was my sabbatical. But to the question, yes. How do you get your husband to to do that? You have to appeal to it as a need for you to be able to be more fervently supportive of him. Give me an example of that. In other words, you know, I'm getting, the wife is saying, I'm getting, I'm getting burnt out and, and my energy and my enthusiasm for the church and for what you need me to do to support you in the church is waning. Okay. And I don't want it to wane. So I need us to have time away. Okay. Because now there's a, there's a quid pro quo <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know this for that in the deal yes. uh, that he can he can um, he can see and feel, mm -hmm. and then ask for that. Insist on the date night, and if something comes up, mm -hmm. then he has to exchange it for another night. Okay, <clears throat> okay, and just make it a reasonable amount of time based on the number of kids and schedules and all that. Okay. So insist on that, and maybe uh, in addition to an extended time but vacation, uh, you have these little. Um, Staycations, I guess you call yeah. them, where mm -hmm. you you know you go away for two days and yep. to a hotel in town, drive, right? Yeah, yep. so Not far. so there are a variety of things you can do, but uh, the wife and the women should insist on it. Yeah, but let him hear the benefit of it. Good, good stuff. Okay, when pastors' wives are struggling, um, where do they turn for support? Where does a pastor's wife go if she wants to protect her husband, protect the ministry? but she needs help, a listening ear, some wise counsel. Well, I, I would hope that there is an older, more mature pastor's wife that she can confide in, who she trusts. Mm -hmm. There's professional counseling available, mm -hmm. okay? 
it becomes difficult when you do it in the church with yeah. a church member because even if you trust them, you've created a jaundice yeah. perspective in their eyes, if, particularly if the complaint is about her husband. Yeah. And so, so that, that can get dicey. So having somebody outside, and they don't even have to be located with Zoom. I'm a, I've become a Zoomologist doing COVID. <laughs> with Zoom, that allows you to talk to people anywhere, anytime, yeah, and see true. their face. Let them see your face. So, so that opens up the window of opportunity for communication of a trusted person. That's good. Okay, so what should a wife or adult children do when their ideas or input are not appreciated or never implemented? Well, I think that that should be, be expressed at the appropriate time when you feel like it, it is heard. Uh, when is there a time I can talk to you and share what I'm dealing with? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, at a time that, you know, it's not flooded with other things. Mm -hmm. And then to be honest about it and then to ask for a response to it. Okay. One, you want to be heard. But you want to, you know, the Bible says, he that hath an ear, let him hear. Uh -huh. So that doesn't just mean hear what I said, but hearken to what I'm saying. Uh -huh. And how do you know that that's happening? Well, you call for a response. Okay. And uh, uh, what, what do you think about what I've said and what can be done in light of what I've said? Okay. So just to recap with a wife or adult children not feeling like they're heard or their ideas are implemented, um, to come to... Uh, your husband or your father when he is at a time when he can hear you. Pick a good time. Um, make sure you're clearly being heard and then ask for a response. Absolutely. You want to ask for, you don't want to go away feeling like you talked, which helps. Yes. But there is no action plan based okay. on that. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Um, someone said, I enjoy serving with my husband. However, I find it hard to worship or be discipled in our church because we're always serving others. Any advice on how I can stay spiritually healthy in this situation? A couple of things. One, the, find outside opportunities mm -hmm. that take you away from the work, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, um, so there, there are lots of uh, Bible studies for women. There are, lots of, there are lots of things that are outside of the church. Inside of the church, create boundaries around your service okay. so that, yeah, this is what I do, but because I want to enjoy the sermon, I want to participate in the worship, uh, let me do this twice a month or so, some other kind of boundary within mm -hmm. and opportunities without. Yeah, I know that, um, I know one of the things mommy would say and say often was, you know, just because you're the pastor's wife, that doesn't mean that you have to necessarily be the director of the women or, mm -hmm. I mean, you have to find your place where you flourish with your passions and bring that to the table. Yeah, I, uh, just to underscore that, women who are pastor's wives should still operate in their calling mm -hmm. in spite of the fact that they're the wife of the pastor. There are assumed roles that many churches have and that some pastors have about what their wife should do but then often they're being called outside of their calling, mm -hmm. which leads to frustration, irritation, exacerbation, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, and uh, conflict even. Yeah. So, but, but if you're in your calling, then you flow. Yeah, that's good, that's good. Um, in terms of um, expectations set for you and your family, I know you talked a little bit about, you know, even from the pulpit explaining that, but think about adult children um, there was a protective way that you and mommy operated when we were smaller. But now, with us being adults, I mean, you know, like we're adult adults, like not like young adults. <laughs> um, do you even find that now you have to act in a protective role for us? And if so, what does that look like when we technically are able to speak and act for ourselves? Well, uh, it is a different, when you're, you're adult children with their own families, with their own children, it changes the dynamic. Um, uh, and because of all that's happening in the world, it, it changes your interaction, it changes your concerns, it changes your uh, uh, expectations even. So I think ongoing communication with your children for the season they're in, for the season everybody's in, becomes paramount. I know, you know, one of the big things for us is the next generation and we're trying to mm -hmm. figure all that out. How do we, how do we affect the next generation mm -hmm. in an uh, impactful way? Uh, so the, I, that's an um, influence of data and perspective that I wouldn't have had years ago because I wasn't as 
that wasn't as much of a concern. Mm -hmm. But when, you've, when you're 71 years old, when you see the losses you've seen and the, the changes in the culture, I think that, that changes and affects the dynamic. Mm -hmm. So in this season of your life, and you mentioned looking forward to um, being intentional about reaching out to the next generation, um, what does that look like for you uh, on the receiving end of all of the thoughts and opinions that your kids have? Because I know, you know, we're... we're it we're, can be a little overwhelming. So what, what would you say if maybe a daughter or a son of a pastor is watching, or even a wife, um, how can we be supportive in our approach. So I know that you already said set an appointment and you said make sure you have a call or a call to a response, a time where you can come back to it. But just in terms of the approach, because it is a need, but mm -hmm. it's hard to, I, I can imagine, to have the barrage of right. all the things that need to be done yesterday. Yeah. So how, what counsel would you give the person who needs to come to you about how they come to you apart from the time and well, obviously, the, the ideal is if the pastor asks for it, mm -hmm. because now you know it's welcomed, okay? S short of that, you ask him, can we have a time on a semi-regular basis where we can get together and just talk about things as we see them, just like the wife we talked about earlier, mm -hmm. so that we can have uh, input, get your input, tell you what we see and what we think, because if he, if he, if he knows he can schedule it and it's not a barrage yeah. it can be more open to receive it understood because with a barrage you get to a point where I don't want to hear no more <laughs> I think I've heard you say that uh, yeah I have man and especially when you came to me it just was a bunch of stuff it was never ending <laughs> sorry <laughs> sorry hope it's helpful sometimes yeah yeah you have a lot of great ideas though <laughs> Well, I'm so grateful that you are with us still, and hopefully the content that we've shared today, the Q&A with Dad, as well as the presentation from my siblings and my sister-in-law, hopefully there's something about our family dynamic in ministry, but just in general, also how we work together that's been helpful to you in your marriage or with your parenting or with your siblings um, and in your ministry for sure. So thanks for joining us for that. And there's a few things that we want to tell you about before you leave us and before we leave you today. The first thing is the Kingdom Leaders Summit. That is coming up on April the 29th and 30th, and we are really excited about it. Dad, who is the Kingdom Leaders Summit for, and what are we going to be doing in that event? It, it's, it's going to be awesome. Um, the Kingdom, Kingdom Leaders Summit is for anybody who's in service to the Lord, whatever that service happens to be, from the pastor to the pastor's wife, to the deacons, to the elders, to the department heads. Uh, it, there's going to be something for everybody. There are classes you can sign up for, and then there'll be the general sessions that we are, uh, that we're dealing with. Our theme is uh, kingdom, uh, kingdom Christians Rising. We want kingdom Christians to rise to this new level because our culture has disintegrated into a new level. And because of its disintegration, there's never been a time when there needs to be the, the increase of influence and impact through Christian leaders and through the church. And so you'll have, when you go online, uh, of, of, to get to register for the summit, to register is free, uh, mm -hmm. and the general sessions are free. Mm -hmm. uh, the the there's a small cost for courses because of all that has to be done to put this together. Uh, so take a look at it, find out where you fit, what you need, how we can serve you, because that's what our ministry is trying to do. We're trying to serve the church and all of its servants so they can serve the Lord in a culture that needs kingdom impact. Well, it's really exciting, and we're really grateful to have a special guest with us, Dr. Daryl Bach, uh, Pastor James Meeks, Matt Chandler, Conway Edwards, Dr. Conway Edwards, and more. We'll also have music by Grammy-winning artists Jonathan McReynolds and Anthony Evans. Uh, you can register for this Leader Summit at kap2021.com. And just to repeat, the keynote sessions are free. And if you want to get dive deep and get training and specific practical encouragement for your ministry direction, then you can up, upgrade to breakout sessions for an additional fee. So that's kap2021.com. And we look forward to seeing you there on April 29th and 30th. In addition to that, um, we've talked a lot uh, today about my mom. Obviously, Pastors Wise Ministry was something that was on her heart to do to serve 
uh, women like her in ministry. And that's why we're even doing this presentation today to make sure we're continuing that ministry to pastor's wives. But one of the things that my mother firmly believed was that women lived life in seasons. And as dad mentioned earlier, she wrote a book called Seasons of a Woman's Life. Um, she wrote that book years ago. And just last year, Priscilla and I took that material that my mother put in the book and we uh, reorganized it for a Bible study. So I want to make sure you know about that. You can find out more about it at loisevans.org forward slash season. And there is a companion Bible study where Priscilla and I did the video Bible study to go along with the content from the book. And that content can be yours for a gift of any amount. And again, that's loisevans.org forward slash seasons. It's something you can do alone or even in a group. And last but not least, we don't want you to leave this broadcast and feel like you're alone. There are so many resources available to you from the Pastor's Wives Ministry. You can um, look into joining our Facebook group and uh, it's going to be, there's, I think we're going to put that information in the chat for you. In addition to that, there is a Facebook page for Pastor's Wives, an Instagram page for Pastor's Wives, YouTube channel for Pastor's Wives. And so you don't have to feel alone, especially in this season, this 2020, 2021 season. We know a lot of people in general, and I'm sure pastor's wives have struggled with that as well, given the uniqueness of their situation. So you don't have to be alone. You can be encouraged. And we're constantly putting out material to make sure you stay that way. You can go to loisevans.org forward slash Facebook for the, uh, for the Facebook group. And in there, you'll have an opportunity to gain connection and community with other women that will help you to navigate hard times specific to your season. We're excited that you joined us. Um, thanks, Dad, for joining me today. Thanks for having me. I'm delighted yeah. to be with you. Proud of you, too. You're doing a great job carrying on your mom's legacy. So thanks. I appreciate that. Thanks. Well, it's my pleasure to do so. Anyway, we're so glad that you joined us. And uh, stay in touch. Did I say anything else? Am I supposed to say something else? Oh, we're supposed to have Daddy pray. Yeah. Daddy, can, can you pray? We can't even pray without prayer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's pray. Father, thank you for all those who are part of this uh, time together for their lives, for their families, for their ministries. And we know that ministry can be tough. We, we do apologize to you for where mm -hmm. we have fallen short of your demands, mm -hmm. your requirements, your expectations. But we are grateful we do not have to earn acceptance, that you accept us even though you want us to continue to grow and improve to be a servants of the Lord. For each of these ladies, particularly those who are suffering, mm -hmm. suffering personally, suffering health-wise, mm -hmm. suffering with ministry, suffering with marriages, I pray that you will, on the short term, show them a light, show them a, 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 a word of encouragement, bring somebody into their sphere who will, um, who will give them something they can hold on to directly from you. And we just uh, pray for those who are, who are hurting, and at the same time, we pray for uh, the, the husbands who are ministering, that you will create solid teams of impact in the sphere of ministry you've given them. So thank you for the broadcast. Thank you for uh, the legacy of Lois Evans. Mm -hmm. And thank you for Crystal continuing that legacy. And, and may your name be made great in the days to come. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks again for joining us. Have a great afternoon.